Bună ziua, dragi telespectatori, sunt Gabriela Sava și vă zic bine ați venit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Euroferma. Ne întrebăm deseori, ce înseamnă să ai o afacere de familie? Ce înseamnă să fii antreprenor? Cât contează materialele cu care tu vrei să produci? Cât contează piața pe care vrei să vinzi sau concurența? Cât contează oamenii cu care tu vrei să lucrezi? Și ne mai întrebăm apoi, cât durează o afacere? O începi cu foarte multe speranțe, te aștepți să fie pentru totdeauna. Însă, statistic, numărul de ani în care rezistă o afacere de antreprenoriat în România este 3, 5 sau maxim 10 ani. Era normal să ne întrebăm, cum rezistă afacerile de familie și dacă ele pot fi lăsate moștenire în alte țări? În România nu sunt multe astfel de firme care să poarte un nume, să poate trece proba timpului și a generațiilor. Dacă nu spunem un brand, un anume sau o companie, în ultima perioadă învățăm că ferma este una dintre afacerile care pot fi lăsate moștenire. Noi, astăzi, aducem în atenția dumneavoastră a fermierilor câțiva oameni a căror nume de familie este trecut pe cartea de vizită, dar și pe numele utilajelor din ferma dumneavoastră. Astăzi vorbim despre afacerea familiei Pettinger. Continuăm seria emisiunilor exclusive începute în urmă cu mai bine de 10 ani, realizate acasă la familii celebre din lumea mecanicii agricole. Am pornit de la întrebarea firească. Ce înseamnă să te naști în familia a cărei nume este deja un brand internațional? Moștenirea numelui pare o binecuvântare, dar poate fi și o povară. Le ești dator părinților și bunicilor tăi să continui acest business? Ce responsabilitate ai să duci mai departe acest nume? Vrei, poți sau este o obligație? Am discutat pe rând cu moștenitorii afacerilor din familia Klas, Waderstad, Maschio, Sola, Toseli, Sfogia, Ovlac, iar astăzi vorbim despre acest lucru cu reprezentantul familiei Pöttinger, Gregor Titechmaier. My name is Gregor Titechmaier. I'm member of the executive board of Pöttinger Landtechnik. Um, I'm Austrian and uh, I do also live in that area and I appreciate it to be a member of the Pöttinger team. Indiferent de întrebarea de la care am pornit, am descoperit câteva elemente comune. 1. Perioada în care s-au născut aceste afaceri. 2. Determinarea membrilor familiilor și a generațiilor următoare de a duce mai departe o idee, apoi o realizare, ceea ce își va pune amprenta pe dezvoltarea fermelor agricole. 3. Convingerea că ceea ce fac, fac bine și că produsul lor are menirea de a aduce progres, productivitate și ușurința vieții din câmp. Tell me more, how the, this business start? Our business has quite a long history, so the company was founded uh, more than 150 years ago. Uh, the founder was uh, called Franz Böttinger. He was, uh, so to say, the first generation of that business. Uh, meanwhile, there is uh, the fifth generation more or less ready to step in. Mr. Franz Böttinger, he founded that company in 1871. And two years ago, we, we had that uh, great opportunity to celebrate that 150 years anniversary. Onorează trecutul și fii viitorul. Acesta este titlul evenimentului sub care compania a sărbat în 2021 150 de ani de activitate. Franz Pöttinger, maestru ceasornicar, a știut să surprindă spiritul vremurilor sale și a văzut că a venit vremea progresului mecanic în agricultură. Când omul care era lăcătuș, fierar și constructor de puțuri a înființat compania, cu siguranță că nu și-a putut imagina că un secol și jumătate mai târziu o companie de succes internațional îi va purta numele. He was a kind of universal genius uh, in his uh, in his way. Uh, his skills or his education was the one as a, a blacksmith, for example, in combination with a locksmith, and he was a, a watchmaker. For example, he designed and built the watch of the uh, church tower in Griskirchen. Uh, so he was also strongly connected to that area. So at that time, Griskirchen, our hometown, had about a bit more than 2,000 inhabitants. So that was a, a small, uh, small, tiny town. He had, a, a, so to say, um, a good feeling for the demand of uh, the farmers. 1870 or in the, in the early 1870s, So he invented a, a forage cutting machine to make life and work easier for the farmers. Uh, and he got a patent for, for that system as well. He showed the machine uh, um, some uh, local uh, exhibitions or fairs. And that's how the business uh, got started. 
Franz Pöttinger și-a făcut un nume ca și ceasornicar. Printre altele, el a fost cel care a realizat ceasul din clopotnița Griskirchen, unde a oferit un serviciu bun și loial timp de mai bine de 100 de ani. În prezent, împodobește cantina de la sediul companiei din Griskirchen. Primul brevet a fost obținut încă din 1875, de către fondatorul companiei pentru tocătorul său de paie, cu care fermierii își economiseau muncă manuală laborioasă. Însă Franz Pöttinger nu și-a scutit nici timpul și nici eforturi pentru alte proiecte. A construit instalații hidraulice și generatoare de gaz pentru iluminatul public. Astfel, foarte devreme, Griskirchen a reușit să treacă de la iluminatul cu cherosen la iluminatul pe gaz. Compania Pöttinger și-a continuat dezvoltarea, prin transferul, în 1909, de la Franz la fiul său, Alois Pöttinger. Între 8 și 10 oameni erau deja angajați de companie. Din 1909 a apărut primul logo al companiei, cu un spic de cereale și inițialele A și P pentru Alois Pöttinger. Still a small business, of course, um, but uh, the second generation was then uh, Alo- Alois Pöttinger. He stepped into that business um, and uh, third generation was Heinz. And there were three brothers, uh, first generation, and that's maybe the uh, that's the the younger history. So Klaus and Heinz, uh, who represented the first generation, they had uh, a lot of influence or positive influence in the entire development of the business. Um, so they have been uh, responsible to develop the company for a, a time period of almost 25 years. And, and they um, recently retired, so Klaus and Heinz, they stepped back from the uh, operational um, management in 2016 and 2017. And at that point in time, uh, so we uh, had or we have got this wonderful opportunity to take over responsibility. Um, we started to lead the company from 2016 on. So this is, I would call it, or I always call it a kind of a transition period because there is already a fifth generation of young Pöttinger family members uh, and they are in education and they will, will for, for sure, some of them will for sure be ready within the uh, years to come to, uh, to take over the lead of the company again. Pöttina and Pöttinger. Who is Pöttina, who is Pöttinger? So it, it's difficult because uh, we use one... Um, one letter that is not really common in international languages uh, but the right pronunciation is Pöttinger. This is the name of family? It's interesting, it's not only a family name, so it's our company name, it's the brand, it's a family name, but there is also a small uh, village around that is called Pöttinger, so uh, I, uh, this would be my guess that maybe the family comes from that village. Do you believe this kind of type of uh, business, can we start today? Um, I think that was the period where um, services in the farming and agricultural business started to become done by machines. So, you know, we have in our history, we have, we have that period of industrialization, mechanization. And, and, and in that, uh, from, from late 1800, cent- century 1800 to, to 1900, That was also the, the period in time where engineers uh, considered how could we uh, support processes also in farmer's business. And, and that was the intention. And you know, this is how the history still um, uh, is, is part of, of our present business because part of our mission statement is, for example, uh, that, that we have a target to support our customers, the farmers, in make their, making their life easier, supporting their processes uh, and, and making sure that, that our machines deliver the, ber- the best working results. The major reason behind is that we all know that the population on, on this planet, planet is, is, is getting uh, higher or we are getting more and more people on the, on, on, on the planet Earth. And again, part of our mission statement is that we contribute our part, our small, uh, small and l- or little part, Uh, to make sure that there is enough food around, that there's enough food around for people living on, on, on our planet. And there is, land is limited. So that's the, the number one resource uh, in the farmer's business or in agriculture. And land is limited. 
So we have to increase uh, effectiveness and efficiency in all farmers' processes, and and that's some that's something or that's a major a major point that drives our business. Many company have uh, have the the motto. What is your motto? Yeah, our motto is, uh, I would say, we have two. Uh, the the claim is uh, that put, that Pöttinger wants to make uh, uh, the farmer's business more successful, um, and in addition, we also say um, everybody needs agriculture. How is this year? Uh, this year is. I have to explain that our business year starts with uh, August first uh, and runs till uh, July thirty first. Uh, and this this business year was the uh, was the was a, a, another record year for for Puttinger. So we have uh, been able the entire Puttinger team uh, has has been able to do a, a great achievement with a turnover record. But we also feel that uh, the demand is declining already. So we are and we have been moving already a couple of months ago in a, in a more difficult economic phase of the entire industry. There is a high uh, or a strong connection of uh, the company putting and our business to our customer group, the farmers. Or always, uh, whenever it is the case that the farmer's business is, is doing well, uh, also our business is doing well. Because uh, farmers are only able to do investments, investments in new machinery, if they are earning money. And this is also very much uh, influenced by the behavior of our of customers, us as customers and, and end users uh, of food and agricultural products. So, and we feel or the last months have already shown that, for example, prices for milk or other arable products have been going down. And whenever we have that development that uh, the, the prices for this kind of products uh, are being reduced, then the farmer's business suffers. And this has an impact on, on, on the business of uh, agricultural technology or machinery as well. Have the farmer future? Well, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that the farmer's business uh, has sustainability and future. Uh, because, as I already said, it is the base for, for food for, for, the, for the population of our, on our planet. So, as long as we have no 100% artificial product, which is produced by, I don't know, oil or whatever, uh, we need this arable products and we need farmers' businesses. Um, that's, that's one point. Uh, but in addition, of course, uh, we are faced, and that's not a new development, with, uh, uh, with serious structural changes in the entire farmers' business. The, the companies or the farms are getting larger and larger, so the, the scale of economy is increasing. And, and smaller businesses are disappearing, unfortunately. And on the other hand, there are lots of farms that are gaining more land and, and extending their business. And so there is also a different demand on, on machinery. Um, the, the machines they're working with, for example, is getting wider and wider. So the machines are getting bigger and bigger. And this is not in all aspects a positive development because if we have big and heavy machines, uh, this is not the real benefit for land because uh, big machines are heavy and they depress the, 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 the ground. Plow or not to plow, um, you know, it is also, in, as in, in several other aspects in life, um, it is a matter of uh, diversity. And in some aspects, it makes sense to plow, in some not. And we have alternatives to plowing. That, or there are several reasons why to use a plow or the, the process of plowing or not. And uh, if we talk about these areas where we have a lack of water, uh, then of course there has to be considered and thinking, and uh, they have to think about different processes uh, uh, in addition or compared to plowing. New regulations are important. It is not always easy to make to make everybody happy because. Uh, uh, we are a heterogeneous uh, group of different countries in, in Europe uh, with sometimes not always uh, the same uh, targets. Uh, but one, one thing I, I do really believe that uh, in general we have to reduce chemicals in farmers' business. That's also a chance for the entire uh, ag tech industry because if we have to reduce 
chemicals or make the use more precise. And that's also a matter of how we can, can act sustainable in, in that matter. Uh, but if we reduce chemicals, then we have in a certain way to adapt new mechanical processes. And that's also a chance. That's a chance for, for us as an industry uh, that needs artificial intelligence, for example, that needs uh, digital systems, that needs uh, robots, for example, and sensors and actors. So entire industry has to see development potential in general. Rămâneți alături de noi, revenim după o scurtă pauză de publicitate. Well, if we talk about the acquisition of Martemark, there have been different reasons for us to, to, to do that. Um, uh, one, of course, is uh, that there was a, a gap if we just talk about the product category itself. So precision planting was something we, we did not have in the past, and, and so it was interesting. Uh, and there are not a lot of systems around and Matamark was uh, free for acquisition, so that was a real chance for us. Uh, we have other seeders uh, and seeding machines and drill machines in our program, uh, but we are pretty convinced, uh, also again talking about sustainability in farmers' business, that we have to increase efficiency and we have to, uh, to develop the processes much more precise as we did it in the past. Uh, we have been talking about chemistry and chemicals. If we if we use chemi chemicals in the future, there there should be the intention to use it as efficient as possible. And 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 you know that's that's a process. If we start the process in arable business with seeding, then we have to do we, we have to do or to find the precise placement of the seeding corn. How many employees do you have now? You start with eight, ten, and now? Now we have 2,000, around 2,200 uh, people working for Pöttinger uh, all around the world. So we are in an international business and we may call ourselves an international company. So there are uh, almost 40 different nationalities working for Pöttinger. We have six production plants uh, in Austria, in Czech Republic, in Italy, in Germany and uh, 17 subsidiaries uh, in, uh, in the world, so to say, uh, where we have sales and service organization to serve our customers. And the big market for you? Um, I have to separate. So the biggest and most important markets uh, are, of course, Germany, France, Austria, uh, Poland, Czech Republic and, and UK, in, in that's the European area. Uh, but the number one potential, and and we uh, and I'm really glad to follow a wonderful development there, is uh, for putting as North America. So uh, we had uh, a wonderful growth program the last couple of years, and I'm pretty convinced that there is still a lot of to uh, to achieve there. Regarding the collaboration partnership with our partner in Romania, NHR Fight Intertrading. It's a long-term successful history because I'm now working by Pöttinger since 22 years and since 22 years I was not the starter but I know NHR in Romania and it's a good successful story partnership. NHR is having a lot of outlets around Romania to be very close to our clients, to be our longer arm for service, spare parts and so on. And if the clients, the farmers, have problems, go to NHR. If they are interested to buy machines, contact the salesperson. The salesperson will be in contact with us. Imaginați-vă că sunt fermier, așa cum sunteți și dumneavoastră, și sunt genul de fermier care nu am nimic de la Pöttinger în fermă. Ce mi-ați spune? I would say, first of all, that Pöttinger is a family-owned company, like a farm. So we are in a family business, so everybody, let's say, knows what we are doing. Company is family owned, a farm is also family owned, maybe it's a cooperative, but it's family based. And so we are people, employees with handshake quality, and we want to bring the farmer a machine where he can have a benefit. So the farmer is the food producer all over the world, and the farmer needs a good machine to get the profit, to make the life easier, and we have the correct machine for you. Uh, so if we talk about the, 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 the future of our company, there, there are of course some, some, 
strategic goals uh, that are on top of all our uh, plans and 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 the number one target is and that is very uh, or that is strongly connected to the fact that we are a family-owned business is that we want to stay a family-owned as a family-owned business and and now that the, the fifth generation is coming and maybe there is a sixth the seventh and some more generations uh, running and owning that business of course, there are serious differences between, uh, for example, stock listed companies and, and family owned businesses. And in lots of aspects, there are solid advantages to work for a family owned business. That's uh, important because this is, so to say, grinded in stones that we want to stay independently as a family owned business. Number one. Second is, of course, uh, to make sure that this, po that this company uh, can, can see a bright and positive future is also that we are able to, to gain profits. So we do want to grow our business, but growth is not the number one target. So we want to have a, or we want to see a steady and profitable growth. That's our intention. Um, and then in addition, there, there is so much room for us to improve because we are compared to some much bigger players on the market we are a small company and we know that there is room for improvement and room for growth uh, in uh, different product categories on different markets because we are we have some strong positions for example in our home market austria or in germany but there are lots of uh, uh, major and important areas where we can intensify our sales and distribution work. And you know, that's also wonderful, in a, in a certain way, wonderful, challenging, uh, that there is so much to do for us uh, to improve our business.